So I've already done that, ranging from 0.25 molar right up to a 1 molar solution. And we're going to use this to basically create what is known as a standard curve. And with the standard curve, we will be able to detect or estimate the concentration of our unknown solution. First things first, I'm going to take, I've got a blanket, so our blanket is water because when I was making up the copper sulfate solutions, I took deionized water to dilute them. So I'm putting in my deionized water and I'm putting it in. And you can see there's a reading on the wavelength. So I'm just going to hit zero. And once it comes down to zero, that's essentially the machine blank. So this will now not detect any interference that is due to um, the water that I made it up in. So I'm going to put in the one molar now. And this is actually my reading. So at a wavelength of 430, you can now see the reading for a one molar copper sulfate solution. So now what I'm going to do, I'll take that curvette out. I'm going to twist it. So we're now up onto wavelength two, which is 200, oh, 470 nanometers. I'm going to put in my blank, so the deionized water cover it, press to zero, once it's come down to zero, I'll take out my blank, put in my one molar copper, copper sulfate solution, and again, you can see the reading, so it's still fairly low, gonna take it out, move it to the third one, which is for, uh, 490 nanometers, Put in my blank, zero it. So this is to find basically where is the maximum absorbance because this is the wavelength that we want to use for all of our measurements. So I've blanked it, I'll now put in the copper sulfate solution, the one molar. And again, that's the reading. So it's still very low. Now I'm going to change it to wavelength number four, which is 520 nanometers, put in the blank, blank it, or zero it, there we go, and put back in my one molar solution, so reading's getting a little bit higher but still very very low, I'm now going to change it to number 5, which is 550 nanometers, put in my blank, zero it, and now put back in my one molar solution, okay, so you can see the reading for that. Now I'm going to take it up to number 6, which is for the 580 nanometers, zero it again with my blank, sometimes it can take a while to blank and if it doesn't look like it's going to go, I'm just going to go one up, zero it, okay, and then I'll go back one down and try again. If after a while it will not settle, you may have to just skip that one. I think I'm going to skip it. And so now we're on number 7, which is 600 nanometers. Again, I'll blank it. I'll zero it on the blank. Put in my one molar. So now you can see that it's actually is starting, you're starting to get quite a high absorbance. Um, that's what we're looking for. And so I'll try the final one, 
which is 700 nanometers. So if this is less than 1.26, I'll put in my blank oh, and zeroed it. So this is, if this is less than 1.26, we're going to go back down to the orange. Okay, so it's higher. So this is the maximum absorbance that we've got on the one molar. So this is the wavelength that we're going to use then for all further readings. I'm just going to put back in my blank, check it's still at zero. And now we're going to come, so that, that is, will be the first part where you've worked out where the maximum absorbance is. The next part you have to do is to work out what the absorbance is for all the different concentrations and use this to produce what's called a standard curve. And from the standard curve you can then use it to estimate the concentration of copper in an unknown. So the first one I'm going to use is my 0.25 molar um, dilution. So I'm going to put this in. And you can now record the reading for it or its absorbance. Okay, so it's settled. I'm now going to take that curvette out and lift the curvette with my 0.5 molar solution. Put it in. And again, you can take the reading. So it seems to have settled. If it jumps between two, just pick one because it's not, it's well within the level of detection. Okay, so I'll take that out. Next one is 0.75 molar. Okay. I'm going to lift my 0.75 and you've got your reading. And then Finally, I'm going to do that one molar that we used to work out which where the maximum absorbance was. So I'm just going to put it in again. So if the machine's working right, it should be similar to what we got when I had it in at this absorbance on the first part. So it's just taking a little while to settle. Using those, you can now produce a calibration curve. This is given to you um, and you don't know what concentration it is and you want to work out where it falls. Um, one way you can do it is sort of you can look at the color. So if, particularly when it's against the 0.25, you can see it's a much darker blue. So it's definitely going to be a higher concentration than this. But I don't really know where it falls beyond that because all of it, it's almost all of them are very blue. So I've taken it into a curvette. I'm going to put it in and measure it absorbance. So once it settles, you can now use this absorbance and your calibration curve to read across from the absorbance to work out what concentration it actually is. And so that's how you can produce a calibration curve with, on a colorimeter to work out the concentration of an unknown solution.